Hello. I'd like to talk to you now about uh, shafts in torsion, how to calculate the shear stress, and how to calculate the angle of twist in a shaft. Now, one of the questions I get from my students a lot is, why are we interested in shear stress in shafts? Why not normal stress? What's going on there? Well, I've got a, a nice example here. This is actually a piece of foam that uh, kids use in swimming pools. This is a, my kids call this a noodle, but this is a, uh, uh, something that helps them float in the water. And they're, they're long and flexible. It's just a closed cell foam. So what I've done is I've put a uh, kind of a grid on it here. The other thing I've done is I've cut it along the side there. So you can see it's been cut open. Now normally it comes uh, all in one piece. It's, I don't know, probably extruded. Now, uh, circular shafts, of course, don't have that uh, cut along them. But let me show you what happens if you do have that cut. What I'm going to do is grab the ends and twist here. So if you see this, see how I'm doing that? Right there? There's a shear across that, across the uh, cut there. If I do this, let me do this this way. See? There's an angle of twist there. It's easy to see. And you can see the shear across that cut. The cut's now obvious. See if I can freeze this here. Actually, I kind of can't. Right there, where the cut is, you can see that these two ends have slipped past one another. That's shear. That's when shear is motion like this. Okay? That's what this is. That's shear. That's what it looks like. Okay, and if this seam were glued back together again to try to resist this, that would give rise to shear stress. Okay, there's no compression or tension we assume on our on our uh, drive shaft, so there's no normal stress, just shear. Okay, so there you go. Ooh, just dropped my glasses. There we go. Um, so let's take an example here. Let's take an, an outer diameter of 65 millimeters, an inner diameter of, what did I say here, 21 millimeters. And I picked these numbers because those are basically what I measured off that blue uh, swimming noodle. And so that means that the radius, the largest radius, is 32.5 millimeters. Okay. Now, let's figure out two things. Let's figure out the shear stress and let's figure out the torsional deformation. The, the twist. So I'm going to need to know a couple of things here. I'm going to need to know what material that is. That's steel. So G for steel is uh, 80 megapascals. Let me make sure I get this right. Yeah, or gigapascals, I should say. And if you're doing this in English units, the United States still works in English units a lot, even though we shouldn't. Um, that's 11.6 uh, let's see, times 10 to the 6th PSI, all right? And the last thing we're going to need to know is a length. If we can uh, find a uh, uh, torsional deformation, twist angle, we need to know a length. So the length, let's see, let's put that, let's put that right there. And I think I made that 4 meters. Okay, so there we go. Now, the expression for twist, or for uh, shear stress, equals T R over J, where T is torque, R is ra uh, the, the radius at which we're figuring shear stress, and J is a polar moment of inertia. There we go. So we're going to need to know how to figure out torque. Well, shafts transmit torque and power, depending on how you look at it. So let's say the power we're trying to uh, transmit is... Uh, I'm, I'm switching this up on you, and I apologize. A thousand horsepower. I'm sorry. I think in terms of horsepower, I shouldn't. I was raised that way. I do. Um, and that's 745.7 kilowatts. So if you're... That's not omega, that's a W. 745 kilowatts. So uh, American students out there, if you're trying to relate horsepower to... Uh, kilowatts, one horsepower is about three quarters of a kilowatt. That's a, that's a pretty good rule of thumb. Now, I'm going to need to uh, have power here. I really want torque, so in order to figure that out, I need a, a uh, rotational speed. Now, we normally think in terms of RPM, so I'm using 240 RPM, all right? And that works out to uh, 25.133 radians per second. Okay. 
you know, we need, we're going to need this in radians per second, not RPM. Now, I don't know of anybody who thinks in terms of radians per second. Um, so anyway, power equals torque times N. So I need torque, and that's going to be P over N. All right. Make sure I got this in frame here. I just got it in frame. Okay. And that's going to work out to, I'm going to give you this in Newton meters, uh, 29,670. meters. All right, so I've got everything I need here. I've got the torque, I've got the radius, and I've got J. Where do I have J? Let's figure out J. J is pi over 32 times big D to the fourth minus little d to the fourth. Okay, remember that's going to be meters to the fourth or millimeters to the fourth, however we choose to do this because we're talking about moments of inertia here. Moments of inertia always have the unit's length to the fourth. All right, so it's pi over 32. Now, let's do this in millimeters, I guess. 65 millimeters to the fourth minus, uh, what was it? The unit was 21. Now, that's not millimeters to the fourth. That's that quantity to the fourth, just to make that clear. Okay, there you go. Now, here's the deal. With metric units, you're gonna, if we do this in meters, we're going to have a little teeny weeny number. And if we do this in meters or millimeters, we're going to have this huge number. If there's anything wrong with the metric system, and there's not much wrong with it, that's probably the one thing I guess I would complain about. Um, let's see. So that's going to be 1.733 into the 6 millimeters to the 4th. Okay? Sorry, this is going to be a really big number, but so is that, so this works out. Now, I'm going to need to erase some of my little board here. So we've got everything we need, TR, now we have J, all right? So I'm going to erase some of this stuff over here, and we'll evaluate that. Okay, so TR over J, in fact, let me get rid of this too. Okay, so T... Uh, is 29,670 newton meters times r, which is going to be that. That's going to be 0 0.0325 meters over j, which was this gargantuan number. Um, let's see, that's going to be 1.733 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the fourth. And when we get to do that, we get a uh, tau, okay, get a tau of, let's see, 556.3. And that's in megapascals, okay? Now, is that a lot or a little? Now, it turns out that's an awful lot. Uh, maximum shear stress on even pretty good steel is uh, like uh, 400 megapascals. So this is not a reasonable number. You, that's a... Even of a very high quality steel, that would be at or above uh, yield strength. So that's that's not going to be good. In fact, all. So we don't like that much at all. Let's shoot for something a little lower than that. Let's say that uh, I've got some numbers here, so I'm going to kind of kind of lead you on. But let's make some changes to get that down below, say, 200 uh, megapascals. That would be much much better. Okay. Also, while I've got it here, let's figure out theta, which is TL over JG. If you plug those numbers in, you get 49.04 degrees. Well, 49 degrees is like that, okay? That's a lot. Over a 4-meter shaft, that's a lot. So that number and that number both should tell you this, this isn't good. This isn't going to work. So let's make some changes. Well, if you're going to make some design changes, what are you going to do? Right? You can change the material. Well, we've already got steel, and steel has about as high a elastic modulus of any, as anything we can reasonably use. So we're, going to, we're stuck with that. Well, J is a very, very strong function of diameter. So let's make the diameter bigger. By the way, the area here just in case you want to figure it out, which is pi over 4 d squared minus little d squared. And let's see, I got that as 2972. Is that right? Yeah, 
2972. So there's a cross-sectional area in millimeters. If we were to make the, the outer diameter bigger, we could make the walls thinner and get about the same answer for this. So we could make the thing stronger without making it heavier. Let's try that. Okay, so I'm going to change, let's see, I'll change all this stuff here. Okay, let's make the outer diameter 130 millimeters. So I'm going to double the outer diameter. Well, the inner diameter gets to be a lot bigger. And let's see, I'm going to make the inner diameter to be 115 millimeters. So now my wall thickness is only 7.5 millimeters. My wall thickness is now like that, right? And with this, the area is now, uh, let's see, 2886. Okay, so the area is actually a little smaller. This is actually going to be a little lighter. When we do this, let's see, J is pi over 32, big D to the fourth minus little d to the fourth. And if we calculate that, you get 1.087 times 10 to the 7. Of course, so that's, that's a lot bigger. That's a whole lot bigger. Now, now let's see. Again, this is TR over J, and if we calculate that out, tau turns out to be 177, that's a 7, not a 2, ah, point, point 0.4 megapascals. So now we're down into the reasonable range. This is actually reasonable. Now, there's not much safety factor on this. This is, depending on the steel you use, this is still fairly close to yield strength for some materials, but you'll have some safety factor there. And the last thing, calculate our angle, and I get 7.82 degrees. Okay, well that's that's a lot better. That makes a lot more sense. So that's that's an angle like that. That's hardly anything, especially over four meters. I erased it, but it's four meters long. So that seems a lot more reasonable, and that seems a lot more reasonable. So there you go.